as we continue in chapter nine, um, we are focusing on medical imaging that uses high energy radiation. And there's two different groups that that um, can be broken down into, x-rays for high energy radiation or unstable nuclei for high energy radiation. So what we're gonna do on our next slide is use um, a Venn diagram style of table, except for instead of having circles, we have rectangles. Um, but we're gonna look at um, the nuclear imaging, we're gonna look at x-ray, and we'll look at ways that they are different and that they are similar here in the middle, okay? Um, so let's, um, as we compare and contrast these, um, look at nuclear imaging first, okay? So nuclear imaging is gonna be um, having those unstable nuclei, right? Nucleus that is not happy with how it is. Um, and anytime you have nuclear imaging, you're gonna see some kind of isotope listed. So F18 or TC99M or I131. Um, so those are all the unstable nuclei. And if you remember from chapter two, these are the masses of those um, atoms, right? So when I talk about nuclear imaging, um, you are usually going to inject these isotopes. Um, so usually inject um, your radioisotopes as what we call a tracer or sometimes you'll hear it called a carrier molecule um, that targets a system. All right, so we inject some kind of radioisotope um, that is our tracer now, targets a specific system. So let's say if we wanna image the thyroid, then we're gonna inject a chemical that the thyroid naturally picks up, which is iodine. That's where most of the iodine in our bodies is found, is in the thyroid. Um, if we want to target um, the bones, then we'll attach some technetium to phosphorus because there's a lot of phosphorus in our bones. So we inject that radioisotope or tracer. Um, I'll draw you a little syringe here just so we can picture this here. So we've got our radioisotope. And remember, the thing about radioisotopes is they give off energy, right? So that radioisotope or tracer that you just put in is going to be emitting energy um, once it goes into you. So say we take this person here, we inject them with a radioisotope, we let them sit for a few minutes. Now that person is going to have radiation coming out of them in all directions because, or specifically maybe from their thyroid, um, because they've got that unstable nucleus that's breaking down and giving out energy. So this energy or this radiation um, is going to be emitted continuously. So these emit continuous radiation. You can't turn it on and off. Um, and these type of imaging procedures are especially good for change over time. So they help um, us to visualize um, change over time. What I mean by that is like, how does your thyroid pick up iodine over time? Not at one instant, but over a day's time, is it getting as much iodine as it should? So change over time, and a word if we use for that is that this is dynamic, like it's changing. Um, so for example, iodine uptake over time. Um, or another thing you might look at is glucose uptake uptake over time in a um, tumor, for example, or um, how your bones are taking up something. So we get from these nuclear imaging procedures, these dynamic change over time kind of perspectives. Now in contrast over here, if I take an x-ray, I'm not getting like a time lapse, right? An x-ray is just, is the bone broken? Is it not? So these are gonna have a different kind of role for what we do. Um, so let's look at the x-rays and then we'll look at the similarities. So instead of injecting radioisotopes, so putting that um, radiation into the patient here, um, instead with x-ray imaging or CAT scans, they use the same um, type of instrumentation, we have an instrument that generates radiation. We have these all over our houses and our phones. A light bulb generates radiation. It's just visible radiation. It's not the high energy that we have here. So here's my um, x-ray tube. It's got light bulbs in it. And that light bulb is specifically um, 
designed has chemicals in it to send radiation um, through a patient. So there's no person on this board. So I'm gonna draw a little person here, okay? Um, so instead of having this chemical that we inject, we just have a light bulb essentially that is gonna give off that energy, all right? Notice there's no radioisotope here, it's just the energy. Um, because it's a light bulb essentially, then we can turn it off and on. So you don't have this continuous exposure of radiation. We can just say, boom, get that quick x-ray and you're done. Um, something else to think about with the x-ray imaging, um, dense elements, so things that have a lot of weight for the volume that you have, um, dense elements absorb more radiation. Um, and so that is why we get the pictures that we do here. Calcium is a fairly dense element. So the calcium absorbs the radiation in the bones, and then it's mainly just water in the rest of you, and the water does not absorb the radiation. So elements that absorb radiation, calcium, um, lead. Lead is used as shielding, right, to absorb some of those x-rays. Um, or sometimes you'll use a barium contrast. Um, when you're doing an x-ray, maybe to swallow and see your throat or something like that. These are all, if we look on the periodic table, um, elements that are very low on the periodic table. So that means that they are heavy, have very high masses. All right. So we've got um, nuclear imaging. You inject and get radiation coming out. It's fairly dynamic. Um, these are going to be rather static pictures, um, so barium contrast, static, as in it's just a one-time glimpse, um, where these are more like a time lapse, okay? Um, so we've got some contrast. Let's think about things that are the same here, okay? On both of these, you might see a symbol like this on the door, okay? And that is because both of these, if you can remember back to our flowchart, um, give off high radiation, or high energy radiation, right? So both methods, use high energy radiation. Um, that means they are both giving off energy. Um, and because they do give off that energy, um, they do have some danger associated with them. You don't want high doses of this high energy, it cause you some problems, but it can still be better than having surgery, say. Um, so high, en high energy radiation, they give off energy and we have some danger associated. Other things that they have in common, they're both imaging, right? So these are relatively non-invasive compared to surgery, right? Um, non-invasive visuals of human tissue and symptoms. So we're getting a picture inside of your thyroid, inside of your bones without having to cut you open. Um, relatively, both of these oh, are using low doses. So small doses of these isotopes or small doses of the x-rays here, um, which is gonna keep it safe. So low doses to diagnose. If you want to kill thyroid cancer or if you wanna kill cancer um, somewhere else in your body, then you could use a high dose um, to kill cancer cells or other cells. <laughs> high energy is always going to kill cells in a high dose, so we can up the dose if we need to. Um, and then on both of these, you need a detector. Detector. Um, and so our detectors, I don't really have a color here, but our detector would be this circle here is going to get hit by this radiation and say, okay, here's the picture of the thyroid. Or on the x-ray machine, here's gonna be my detector is gonna say what came through you and so I get these kind of x-ray pictures that we're used to. Um, so you can see some ways that these are different from each other and some ways that they are similar. And now we're going to, on our next slides, go into a little bit more about the nuclear imaging and how that works.